Well, good morning, everybody. I am at the fantastic Meadowlands Fishery near Coventry. Absolutely stacked full of silverfish here, and carp, and uh, roach, and all sorts of bits and bobs. But it's the skimmers I'm after. Hopefully, some quality ones today. And um, it's well, the sun's trying to come out, so it's um, it's uh, it's looking promising. But we have got a very fresh easterly wind. But it's not a problem because I'm in a nice deep peg, what a noted area on this on this venue. We're on Lambsdown Lake at, at Meadowlands, and what I'm hoping to do is put in four big balls laced with dead maggots, casters, a little bit of chop worm, and try and fish a double bulk rig for lift bites in the deep water. It's about nine nine to ten foot here, so um, perfect to show you one of my favourite ways of fishing. It's great when that float just goes doink and you strike and you've got a lovely big skimmer on. So that's the plan. Let's see if we can pull it into practice. Right then, I'm looking forward to this. I've just plugged up one rig so far and we've got four lovely balls of ground bait and it's a fish meal mix. I have actually put a little bit of damp lean in there as well. A little bit of tear to some, it might say on the packet. And uh, just to give it a bit more weight. There's definitely a bit of undertow today. So uh, we've got to be careful. But I'm going to pop them level with, if I remember what pallet I'd lined up with that one there. About there. 13 meters, there's no way I can hold any more than 13 meters today anyway. But that's a nice comfortable range. It just keeps dropping off and off and off anyway past that. So I don't want to go into ridiculously deep water. 13 is lovely and comfortable. And I've got my dolly, but if I need to just go past it. But I'm going to fish dead on 13 to begin with. Hopefully the toe's not too bad. But I've just plumbed up one rig. I'm not going to drop them all down the same hole. I'm just creating a bit of a dustbin lid area. A little bit of an awkward steep bank behind me. So three balls, oh sorry, four balls. <laughs> Can't count. And uh, we'll give it probably 15, 20 minutes for them to settle. And uh, hopefully we'll get an arrival of some nice quality skimmers. And then from then we just have to work out how to feed after that. Do we lose feed? Do we keep potting balls? Uh, do we just leave it? Well, I don't know. That's what the session's uh, about really, trying to work out how to keep them skimmers coming. And every day will be different. So one more ball. Drop this one a little bit shorter. Because there is a slight slope. Just take your time with this, because obviously this is the most important part, getting your feed in. We're just a touch short of this one, right there. And then we're all primed. I say, I'm not going to go straight on it. I don't expect to catch straight away on it, but we need to let them skimmers settle on it anyway. So 20 minutes, we'll go out and have a look. Right then. It's been about 45 minutes actually. I was expecting to start a bit sooner than that, but uh, I got carried away catching short and then I've had a few phone calls and all sorts. So uh, let's have a look at the rig. I haven't had a look long yet, so let's have a quick look at the rig. It equates to a long top four, which is like a six meter rig. Um, well, it's probably half a meter, so it's probably five and a half meters long in total, my rig. And I've got six to eight slick elastic, the orange. Absolutely perfect for this sort of depth of water and this time of year catching silvers, anything from roach to bream. So, uh, and I'll deal with anything with that. And then the rig is a gram and a half. That's one of the new Preston Powers, which look all right, nice and in line and stuff. Decent, probably about one and a half mil bristle, which is perfect in this sort of choppy water. I've just blacked the very top of it. I don't know if you can see that. I've just blacked the very top of it. So I should be able to see lift bites if I see that yellow colour. But um, it's very white water anyway. So I need to be able to see that bristle on black. It's definitely best in that white water. But that's gram and a half. We could get up to two or even more. But I think gram and a half is perfect it's for this. Um, it's on 016 mil line for durability. So I've got a 1.2 gram uh, Olivet there. And then the all-important double bulk is three... Uh, three number nines all together. Now obviously you could use a non-toxic shot like a number four or something or a number six or something like that but it, they're not so kind to the line and this means if I, I can move them apart sometimes having them half an inch or an inch apart 
as a as a tapered double bolt can be good and obviously i can spread them up the line if i need to as well so i'm not scared to do that but i've got versatility there so it is just one bolt there and then a second bolt that's why they call this a double bolt and then um the hook length is six inches 09 to a 16. now you need a decent hook to stay in the fish's mouth in this depth of water hopefully they'll have a 16 if it's hard then i'll drop down to an 18 but a 16 is what i'd like to use and as i say i can move these shot about if i need to and move the olive up but this is all about bombing it down and looking for really positive bites hopefully lift bites but um you'll get gazundas as well obviously so that's a, that's the plan i'm fishing probably about three inches over depth to begin with it's got some toe so this will just bomb it down and keep it on the bottom to where I'm trying to keep the fish. And that's why I haven't been loose feeding or anything. Um, my go-to up plate to start with has got to be a, well, let's just go for one dead maggot. Simple and double dead maggot. I've got a choice of worm, castor, all sorts. So, uh, but we'll start off with dead maggot. It's always a, a reliable starting option. Now, I've not topped up or anything here, so uh, we might need a top up pretty quick. We'll see. We'll try and catch three or four fish. It's a long way to go out to keep to keep feeding, so uh, you know. Try uh, what I, I like to do is perhaps top up with a decent ball, fish it out for 20 to 30 minutes. It's definitely towing there, as you'd expect with that easterly wind. And the rain's starting to come down now, <laughs> but. Uh, Anyway, what I'm looking for is just a nice positive lift or a or a sail away. That that basically this rig just accentuates it there. <laughs> that was textbook. I dashed it all the whole body of the float. So yeah, but what you're trying to do is just make a positive rig. Should be a little skimmer, yeah. Nice. That's a decent start. So that's the target species, that and a bit bigger. That, nice little skimmer. We're off. But that was a textbook lift bite. I always think in this deep water, they hover off the bottom and we, we try and put them down on the, deck, on the deck with our feed and uh, hopefully they'll go down and then they swim back up and dislodge that bulk. This time I'm gonna try double maggot. See, see if we can't work out how to catch some bigger skimmers. It might just be time of day or anything. Those bigger skimmers generally just show up late. There's not a lot you can do to get bigger skimmers early doors. But uh, we'll see. So you've just got to make do with what's in front of you to begin with. But I'm just lowering that down. And obviously with this Olivet and double bulk, you can just bomb the rig down as well. It doesn't have to be a deep venue either, you know, even in three and four foot deep swims, you can fish a double bulk rig, albeit with uh, a slightly different setup, you know, a shorter hook length works much better with uh, the shallower it is. I, I wouldn't hesitate to go down to a four inch hook length. Is that the bite? Oh yeah. <sighs> I just came up half an inch and stayed there and we're back in again so we've got some fish down there that's nice to see this fish looks like a bigger one as well unless it's foul up obviously they're going to pop out out there so because it's so deep i have got a four meter landing net handle it's a bigger one beautiful so two in two drops and such a positive rig, you can really, really catch well doing this. You know, 20 to 40 pound of fish, potentially, if they have it. But that was on double. I'm going to change that because, in my experience, even if there's no marks on it with skimmers, some I don't know whether they pull a bit of slime on it or something, but you never seem to catch very well if you go back out on the same bait when you've caught a skimmer. So, uh... I don't want to go all that way and wish I'd changed my hook bait, so let's just do it. Lower it down, it's just nice to get into a discipline of changing your hook bait. At least those dead maggots stay on really nice. It warms up a little bit, chop worm is the bait to do this. I've put a little bit in, we'll see if, uh, if they'll tolerate a bit of chop worm. It's a bit of a gamble, we're still in early March, so it's a gamble if they'll have that chop worm or not. So I put a little bit in, 
If they'll have it, brilliant. Yeah. That one actually went under that tire. Another skimmer. This is awesome. So just try and a different way of playing fish. Keep shipping back. Way past where I want to be. And then bring the rig round. And then when it's near the net, pop up like that. So that's another way of netting fish with a deep rig. Now, Alan Scott one pioneered that years and years and years ago at Woodsboro Reservoir. So, uh, can't lay claim to that little technique, but it's certainly uh, one that works. That's on double dead again. I don't see any reason to change it. Two dead reds. And we haven't topped up or anything, we just got in, bang, 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 three skimmers and three drops in a pretty quick time as well. Now I had a little look short whilst I was waiting for this to settle and I've had some roach and a few little skimmers and stuff, but nothing on the nothing of the size of what I've just caught and those three drops. So uh, it's all good. And uh, We've basically we've seen how long it takes to get these bites so i keep getting fast bites and there's no need to do anything if uh, things slow down I, I think they'll want a little board there's obviously a lot of fish down there <laughs> mega and uh a bit smaller that one. Oh, that one came off i don't know what that was actually a little bit of snot up the lines it was a skimmer but it wasn't very big I just fouled up one. Like I say, let's change that up, bait, if in doubt. I'll just go with a single dead this time. You're going to lose a few fish, which is why I think a 16th is a nice size up. I mean, if they'll have a 14, even better. If you do this in sort of late spring, early summer, I wouldn't hesitate to do this with a 14 hook. Decent hook bait, bit of, bur bit of worm. Two dead reds. A caster will work, but it's a little bit fragile, so I tend to use caster when it's harder. Purely because if you miss a bite, you've generally been shelled. Whereas a worm or dead maggot will stay on. Live maggots an option as well, but I just find dead maggots brilliant for skimmers. Yeah. Ooh. No, I missed that one. But this is good anyway to go bang, 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 catching fish from the off. And then it's just working out how to keep them there and how to keep them on the deck and uh, hook them in the mouth. Just about to say, that should have gone under by now, and then it's as if by magic it did. About six to eight's lovely as well. Working nicely. Be a roach this. I don't wanna, it was jagging like a roach for a little bit. Hit my camera. Might be a hybrid. Can't see a thing because of the sun. There he is. It is a road. I thought it was. Lovely fish. Big old roach as well. Look at that. Four completely different. So you knew it was a different species. Yeah. Not just for skimmers. So that was on a single, but it was a bit iffy the bite, so let's go back to a double. And we'll try a bit of worm soon as well, because we have put some in at the start. They give me the green light to feed worm, and I think that's great, because generally by feeding chopped worm, you are bringing quality fish into the peg. The only issue, if it's a silver fish only match, worms can bring in carp. If, if carp are counting your match, or you just don't mind catching carp in your pleasure session, then uh, by all means uh, keep putting worms in. But you have to be careful with worms. If you're on a strictly silverfish only competition, then uh, the old carp do like worms, just as much as the skimmers. So the faster you can bomb the rig in, the better as well. I'm not laying it in sideways and letting it arc down. I'm sort of just bombing it down the plug hole get it down to the bottom. There's a lot of water to get the rig down through. If you do lay it in sideways, you're more likely to catch some little fish that are hanging around in the upper layers. So uh, 
try and get that rig down to the bottom as fast as possible. It's another reason for using that heavy one and a half gram float. And uh, so we've waited a little bit now for a bite. So I reckon they've ate everything. Or they've drifted off and spooked a little bit. So uh, we'll see if we can get one. And then we'll quickly top up with a ball and go straight back on it. Some people will top up and wait, but I think go straight on it. Because those fish will follow it straight there. We are. Lovely lift bite. Slightly smaller fish. Yeah, this one feels a bit roachy. It's a hybrid. So there. So uh, I think they want to. Oh no, it's a little skimmer. I think they want a bit more grub. And there's that many silvers down there and they start drifting up so I'd be scared to give them a bit of pudding. Everything's more awkward when you're fishing a, a long deep rig but it's worth it when the fish are a good size. Right, lace for casters here. Don't always put that many in but it's just a, a bit of an experiment to see how much particles I can put in. I'm using today as a bit of a practice. It's also one of my favourite ways of fishing. Find a nice deep still water and do this. We do it at Polloing in Whitecakers quite a lot in the winter on the famous high bank and it used to be an awesome way of catching the skimmers. Now there's a lot more F1s there. Um, it works for that as well, just feeding a little bit differently, little balls. Whereas with the skimmers, we used to put in five or six balls at the start. Now it's all about little nuggets and one or two dead reds and lovely bites. <laughs> so, uh, right, let's go straight back over that. Mostly casters in there, but there were some dead maggots and now I just find casters holds the quality fish. Well, we've put a decent ball of bait in there, so, but I'm still confident we'll get a bite pretty quick. I don't time that, but I'm sure it wasn't more than 20 seconds. Yeah, not a massive skimmer, but like I say, I think them bigger ones will rock up late. And sometimes they'll just rock up on that short line. Lovely fishing. But these skimmers weigh. I know they look thin. They weigh really well. You can soon rock up a weight. Catching like this, I'd be confident of catching 20 pound or more. No problem. So, <laughs> as everyone seems to say, repeat the process. <laughs> and just repeat the process. Hello, Ed. It's just those those three number nines together. You could use number eights, you could use number tens, but on this rig it's number nines. It just exaggerates everything. There we are. Boom, 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 boom. Ooh. Fish didn't like that. Feels a bit better. Playing out there a little bit. Probably not, it's probably is the same size. So bring it right round, quickly up to the top. Oh, wrap round him last minute. He's in the mouth. Yep. He's in the mouth. Only just hooked. So let's try a little bit of work. Not the best worms, it's probably uh well I'd say these worms are about six weeks old now. Yeah. So I've just hooked the worm. What I'm gonna do is just break it by that saddle. It's like a worm head. I don't think it's warm enough to catch on massive bits of worm yet. Just a little bit bigger than a caster, shall we say? Lower that down. Should get a bite on this. What generally happens, if the skimmers aren't bothered about worms, you generally catch more perch. I 
And obviously, if it's one of those days where you think the fish are off the bottom and having it on the drop a little bit more, then uh, you might find that, uh, you know, spreading those three nines out can work. It's more worm head anyway, so that's a good sign. I love it when they do start to have a bit of worm. Yeah. Well, that's the best fish. There it is. Might be a perch. <laughs> if you have to stand up, it's a deep rig. If you have to stand up, the net is different, isn't it? Don't listen to anyone next to you saying sit down or anything. That's a better skimmer on a bit of worm. But that was a slightly better skimmer. Loads of elastic out, that's what you want with these skimmers. If you don't if you if you put like eight to ten or ten to twelve slick on, you're gonna bump a lot of skimmers off, I think. So uh, the softer the elastic the better really within reason. Well, I never saw a bite then, but it just felt like something was odd. <laughs> I know that's weird to say, but sometimes you just know. They just sat there confidently munching away, probably without realising they're looking they're gone. Another skimmer. Awesome fishing. You can see rock up a weight of these, but what you do want, you want to catch a few pound, pound and a half, two pound fishing amongst them. They don't always show on that long line, they, they might show short, late. It's all about keep putting chunky fish in the net. As long as uh, you're coming back with a reasonable sized fish, it makes all the effort of going out 13 metres with a big deep rig on a top four, it makes it all worthwhile. There we are. Took a little bit longer, but it's a decent fish again. Nice chunky skimmer. So, <laughs> I'm going to carry on fishing for a little bit and uh, I hope you enjoyed that because I certainly did. But there, that double bulk rig, so simple, three number eights or three number nines, big olivet, big heavy float, wash, fish on. Later it gets, we're gonna get 